Well, let's discuss comparing acidity of two different hydrogens using a qualitative method. Uh, sometimes we may not have a pKa table handy, or we might not remember pKa values, or simply the hydrogens we're asked to evaluate may not appear on any pKa table that we can find. So we have to use a, a qualitative method. And our text uses the ARIO method, which stands for atom, resonance, induction, and orbital. So these are four qualities of the atom that possesses the hydrogen uh, that we'll, we will evaluate. And we'll evaluate them in order. So we'll start by evaluating the atom. And if we need to, we'll end up evaluating the orbital that the hydrogen is attached to. So let's take a look at an example. What if we had this example? And I'm going to go through here and put in the hydrogen off of the carbon. Uh, and of course, we don't normally do that. But it's useful in this case to uh, have it to compare to a hydrogen that might be off of an oxygen. Okay, So here we have two hydrogens that we want to compare. And let's pretend that we cannot look this up in a pKa table. So the first thing we ask ourselves is, what atom are these hydrogens attached to? Here we have a CH bond. And over here, we have an OH bond. So we have different atoms that the hydrogen is attached to. And that's going to be, of course, our first uh, part of aerial. And these C and O are in the same row. So in this case, electronegativity is the answer. And I don't like writing that whole thing. And so O should give us the more acidic hydrogen, because O is more electronegative. And of course, if we lose the hydrogen, we form this O minus. And if we lose the hydrogen over here, we form a C minus. So really, what Aereo is helping us decide is which of these conjugate bases is more stable. I'll try to write that up here. Which conjugate base is more stable? That's what Aereo is helping us decide. The O minus is more stable because O is more electronegative than carbon. And so O can better stabilize that negative charge uh, compared to carbon. So let's take some green, and we will box in this molecule. It is the more acidic of these two molecules based on the atom argument. Let's look at another example using the same atom argument. and. Let's compare this alcohol to a thiol, which is ex basically the same, except that we have an S instead of an O. So here, the two atoms are O and S. So they, are, they differ by atom, of course. We don't have to go to resonance or induction. And again, we're trying to decide which of these anions that I've drawn here will be more stable. That will give us the more acidic starting compound. Now these are in the same period, I'm sorry, same group, uh, same, uh, same vertical column. So it's not electronegativity here that helps us decide. It's going to be size. And as we know, as we go down a group, we gain size. So the S is a larger atom than is the oxygen. And as size increases, anion stability also increases. So the larger atom is better able to stabilize the negative charge simply because it has a larger number of electrons. If we have 100 electrons and we add one more to get 101, that's less of a change than if we had 10 electrons and added one more to get 11. Uh, so the sulfur starts off with a larger number of electrons. Giving it one more is not a really big deal. Uh, and so that's why the, uh, the larger atom will always be a more stable anion. So in this case, as we go down a group, the sulfur is larger. It is better able to stabilize the negative charge. Let's look at resonance then. So here are some examples. So 
So the first step is to make sure that we have the same atom present here, right? Both of these hydrogens that I want to uh, analyze are attached to oxygen. So the atom portion of aereo does not help us. They are both oxygen. So then we need to move on to resonance. And we need to think about, again, that negative charge. And if there's any resonance st stabilization present for that negative charge. And if we look at the ethoxide over here, you should find there's no resonance available. Right? And we know that from chapter 2. There's no place for that negative charge to go. This is a sp3 fully saturated carbon right there. It cannot accept any more electrons. However, I hope you recognize the acetate anion as having a really decent resonance structure. We have the um, negative charge or the lone pair next to a pi bond. So this is an allylic pi bond. And I need to draw that structure better here because that is not what I wanted. And we can draw a resonance structure that puts the negative charge on the top oxygen instead of on the right oxygen. So this is resonance stabilized. And that right away that tells us that this anion is more stable than this anion. So this is a more acidic hydrogen containing compound due to resonance. So in this case we've established that they are both oxygens, so atom does not help us, and thus we move on to the next uh, step, which is resonance. So the next part of aereo is ARI, that's induction. So let's look at this example. Here's acetic acid, and here's trichloroacetic acid. I'm going to put three chlorines on this leftmost carbon. Which of these is more acidic? Well, we just got done discussing acetic acid and its resonance structures. We know it has resonance. And thus, this also has resonance because it's basically the same as uh, the original acetic acid. So atom, both are oxygen. R, both have the same resonance. Uh, so that leaves us with induction then. And we know that there's uh, three chlorines here. That has a dipole moment pulling electrons, pulling electron density towards those chlorines. Right? So anytime there's an electronegative element present, uh, there's going to be a dipole moment uh, with a partial negative charge on that electronegative element. And so we're going to have this dipole moment present in trichloroacetic acid. There is no dipole moment present uh, going in that direction for acetic acid. And so this dipole offers a little more stability. And we can see that if we look up the pKa's of these two compounds, acetic acid is 4.75 and trichloroacetic acid is 0 0.70, so about four orders of magnitude more acidic because of the presence of those three chlorines. And we could temper that acidity by removing a chlorine, and we'd get a pK somewhere in between 4.75 and 0.7. And we could remove two chlorines, and we get a pK closer to 4.75, still a little more acidic because there's one chlorine. But here we see the effect of induction, where there's an electronegative element pulling electron density towards itself. The last one then is orbital. And that doesn't come into play very often, um, but generally we use this to discuss the acidity of um, hydrocarbons. So when there's no electronegative elements, there are no heteroatoms, there's only C's and H's. So let's look at, say, uh, propane versus propene versus propyne. And so I'm going to look at these hydrogens that I'm going to draw in. And of course, we don't normally draw hydrogens, but I'm going to put them in in this case. Uh, and so, of course, they are all attached to a C, so atom doesn't help us. Uh, resonance, uh, none of them have resonance. We don't expect this anion to have resonance. 
We don't expect this anion to have resonance. And we don't expect that anion to have resonance. Now remember that there is a double bond here in the, the middle anion, but we have a We have a lone pair on a double bond. We don't have a lone pair adjacent to the double bond. And so in this case, there is no resonance. So no resonance and no induction either. There are no electronegative elements that could pull electron density towards themselves. So that leaves us only with orbital. And now it's your job to tell me what orbital these hydrogens reside in. This is a standard saturated carbon. That's an sp3 orbital. This is sp2, and this one is sp. And so as we, um, as we gain more s character to the orbital, right, so this one is about 50% s. Over here, 33% s. And over here, 25%. S. So you can see as you go from sp3 to sp, you're gaining s character. Uh, so as we gain more s character, the ability to stabilize negative charge increases. And we rationalize that by saying that as there's more s character, remember that the size of the s orbital or the shape of the s orbital is simply a sphere. It is generally closer to the nucleus, which has a bunch of neutrons, positively charged uh, protons and neutrons in it. And so if we can hold that extra negative charge closer to the positively charged nu nucleus, we have a slightly more stable situation. So we find that the alkyne that has an H on the end is slightly more acidic than the alkane or the alkene. And we can see that if we look up pKa's. An alkane pKa is typically understood to be about 50. An alkene pKa is around 44. And an alkyne pKa is 25. So you can see a significant difference as we go from alkane to alkene to alkyne. This will come into play more or less in chapter 10. So we'll revisit this concept uh, in chapter 10. Generally, we can decide uh, on acidity using A, R, or I. We often don't get to orbital until we start discussing alkynes.